the latest videos and the funkiest new music in Club Nation. Wendy Douglas here bringing you another edition of Club Nation and this week we're partying down here at Freedom at Bagley's in London's King's Cross as well as new music and only the best in underground cuts in this week's show we'll be hanging out with Asian Dub Foundation and Earth Tribe as they play exclusively for Club Nation plus propeller heads drop by to discuss their new release Spy Break Dominic Aikins brings us up to date with the new Grace Long Player and Monsieur B-Boy extraordinaire DJ Cam talks about substances so a great show lined up for you tonight, so stay tuned. First up, though, we have the first cut from here at Freedom. Saturday Night of Freedom in the space of seven months has become one of the most popular weekly house nights in London. The club boasts four dance floors, each providing something for everyone, with guest DJs that include Darren Pierce, Brandon Block, Roy the Roach, Pete Wardman and Resident Ariel. and Dimitri from Paris have increased interest in French dance music around the world. Another acclaimed name to add to the list is DJ Cam. Substances is his second album and fuses trip, hop, jazz and jungle and even a little bit of classical. Here's a cut from it, see what you think. Substance is more open-minded, you know. You've got a lot of influence you've got a lot of style of music you know a little bit the lp is a little bit jungle a little bit house a little bit dub you know it's like you know uh, and uh, i do substance to show the people what can i do you know because before i do a lot of hip-hop beats you know hip-hop breaks and i say okay i can do hip-hop breaks but i can do you know house break you know a little bit jungle We 
received a lot of music from England, you know, since five or six years. And you know, the French DJ, you know, listened to, to the jungle scene, to the house scene, and you know, they took uh, some piece, you know, from all the scene, and now they, you know, they, they, they decide to do their own music because now they are not shy to do some record because during 10 or 20 years, everybody say, yeah, French music is shit, you know only French variety, and uh, <coughs> now they are not shy, you know, and, and they, they, they decide to do their, their own record, their own label. I've got two sides, you know, the, the the side for the production and the side for the DJ, you know. And when I'm DJ, it's you know I play only fat fat beats, you know, hip hop breaks, you know, jungle, you know. It's not like my LP, you know. My LP is for home, and when I play, it's out. And a lot of people are surprised because they've got my LP and they say, okay, DJ Cam, uh, you know, his set is like is like his LP, but it's totally different. They are surprised. You know. I'm not a chill out DJ, you know.
over propeller heads. The track entitled Spy Break takes the props into new uncharted territory and is also featured in the forthcoming Hollywood blockbuster Playing God, which features X Files star David Duchovny. Alex and Will fill us in. Needed one last bit of music for the film, which the track was already written. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. They, they phoned yeah. up all the sounds like, look, we need a car chase bit of music. Yeah. What you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, we got one. And yeah. uh, and it was just like exactly what they needed. Which and is like, it's oh, called Spy Break. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like we wrote about a year ago, and uh, just with that in mind, like some fictional car chase. It's a total car chase. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then somebody a year later phones up saying, have you got any uh, car chase music? <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact. So, I mean, that's all that is. I mean, we've got no more involvement than that. Scene's got a bit, gone a bit glam rock. Mm. Like mm. Huge names and, mm. and not saying that people with the names don't deserve it or anything, but the whole spirit used to be, you know, used to be that the people like playing the tunes and making the tunes and dancing to the tunes and everything. People were, were all yeah, the same right. people, weren't they? Yeah. You know? Exactly. People didn't really normally bother about who was DJing as long as it was good music. And as long as it didn't stop. Yeah, as long as it didn't stop. Yeah. <laughs> Both come from live backgrounds, really. You know, we both enjoy DJing and that, as well as playing out live. You know, we both played in live bands, so it's just a mixture for us. Of, you know, it seems like a, a progression for. Yeah, it just seems a natural thing to do yeah. if you can is to stand up in front of a load of people and say, "We're great, aren't we?" And, <laughs> I, and if they say, "Yeah," and you feel, you know, I think that's what everyone does it for. Anyone who's been in bands. Dance music has become so serious, and it's kind of fun sometimes just trying to do shit that will make people think, is it, is it all right to do that? Is it all right to play that? Is that all right to put that in a tune? Of course it's all right to put it in a tune. It won't, as long as it, it's all right, you know? And uh, so sometimes you might just might push it a little bit, just do a tune to see, well, I wonder what people make of that. Because you know the people who love it, and that's most people, I think up for a laugh but there's some people who it's, it's, it's fun just to see if they get the joke yeah <laughs> or not <laughs> and 
Dominic Aitkins are great. After huge success last year with singles such as Skin on Skin, and one day, 1997 sees the release of their debut album, If I Could Fly. Dominic dropped by to give us a lowdown on the latest great offering. <laughs> quite a deep album. I think that a lot of people um, assume that because, you know, I'm in dance music that it's, it's really a dance album, but a lot of dance albums are just kind of one song over and over again with a few different mixes. But this is, this is quite different. Oki and Steve are the producers, and they, I mean, they're, they're, they're hugely important to this album. They've created the sound, and it's easy to put your trust in people like them because they've done it. They've done it with you too. They've done it with the Happy Mondays. They've, you know, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. <laughs> you know, it was easy. It was easy, and and they're just really great people as well. And I think, um, you know, it was quite an intense experience. And if you if you're going to expose yourself in, in the studio, um, you need a certain level of, of trust and commitment from the people you're working with. So we had to do a lot of you know, going down the pub and watching football and playing Nintendo and that kind of bonding stuff. And uh, once we could do that, you know, we, could, we could get on with the record. exactly the same person, just maybe a little bit more fatigued than I was 18 months ago. But um, essentially, you know, I've always been a writer, I've always been a singer, that's always what I've wanted to do and I've always been doing it. And whether I'm doing it in Japan or Germany or England or, you know, wherever it is. I mean, li life is better now because I have a bit more control over my own career. You know, I don't have to sing anything I don't want to sing, which is, which is pretty nice.
by a guy called Gerald, which peaked at number 12 in the UK charts in 1989. seeing no Asians and not really having a market for us to go into. So we thought we'd use this money to try and create a market and I think we've actually started there because there's another three albums. Well, there's another one out by a rival of ours. I won't mention his name. And uh, there's going to be another one coming out by a European company soon, which is going to be another Asian underground album. So I think we have definitely done what we wanted to do. Asian role models, are they really? Right, or yeah. like the younger generation to come and check for? That's, right. that's why they used to check to the ragga scene or the, the drum and bass scene because that's their only, that's the only their mates are listening to that. Where else can like these Asian kids go and like check for their brothers? What are their brothers doing? But like slowly, we've seen quite a lot of an Asian crowd coming to our gigs. It's a lot of kids coming and it's cool, it's nice. But we never intentionally went out to do that, it just happened on its own. Asian culture from our Western culture too. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's like you grow, you grow up and you listen to you're listening to hip hop, you're listening to like rap or whatever, like underground music, and then your mum in the background's playing an Indian video, right. you know, or you, or she's listening to an Indian cassette, and then like you, so you're growing with two cultures, you're growing with like the English side of it and the Indian side of it. So for Earth Tribe, it was bringing those two cultures together. <laughs> Check it out, check it out, without a doubt. This is the news I've been bumming about. Yes, we never lost sight of the fight on our hands. Give a look up, this is up. We're giving you the first five. Home ball, when you see her face on. Developing up, so that was fully flown. Creating movements, moves meant to make a big sound. Set to take it to the brink. This is the scene, the set. Mini warriors on the yard, yeah. This is not so bitch. Our main objective was just to make interest in music, all right, with conscious lyrics making commentary on things that are going on. And it just so happens there's such a wide kind of music and musical and cultural background within the band. You know, we've been into punk, we've been into Indian folk, classical, dub, jungle, etc. You know, 
So all we're doing is allowing all of those sounds to come into the music. It does make sense to try and work together with people who are in similar situations as much as possible. But I think that as a group ourselves, you know, we have our own agenda. We have our own way of doing things. And, um, you know, we just see it as a stepping stone to, you know, making our own statement and getting our ideas across. You know, hopefully something like a, a compilation like Eastern Uprising kind of uh, demonstrates a diversity in if there is a sea amongst the sea, you know, and, uh, I think that's a good thing. like um, Blim and Purple Color, whatever, ADF sound system. Um, and then we've, we've played alongside um, other Asian bands, you know, so we don't, we, we are part of that movement, but we're also trying to get to a stage where you don't have to use the term Asian, where nobody bats an eyelid if an Asian or a group of Asians walk into a club, where it, that situation is totally normal. We're working towards that. The Asian thing was a platform for us to step on and maybe go to our next, what our next level is going to be. You know, but I think we needed this Asian thing because there was nothing to label us out there and nobody would look at us, basically. So it has been a good thing. But hopefully it will go on towards better things. Live. In the meantime, have a good week. I will see you later.